Welcome to another Enlightening Scrum Academy episode where we explore the world of Agile and Scrum, one story at a time. I am your host, Grand Scrum Master Scott, and today we've got something very, very special in store for you. We're diving into the playbook of none other than Coach Prime himself, Coach Deion Sanders, who's been turning heads with his remarkable leadership at Colorado University's football team. But what? Can a football coach teach us about Scrum and Agile? Stay tuned as we uncover the four lessons that can supercharge your Scrum team's performance. You don't want to miss this one. Coach Prime's four lessons that is a playbook for Scrum success. Lesson number one, leadership and belief. Run that play. <laughs> In the world of Scrum, leadership and belief are the cornerstones upon which high-performing teams are built. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about being in charge. It's not about being the captain of the ship. It's about being that source of inspiration that gets everyone on your team to bring their A game. Think of it like Coach Prime's magic. He didn't just lead the team. He got them to believe in themselves more than what they could possibly see. How are you getting your team to believe in themselves? Do you have that overarching vision to see what they cannot see at that particular time, at that particular moment? Scrum Masters and Product Owners are the one who brings this magic to agile teams. We set the course by painting a clear picture of where we are headed creating a space where trust and collaboration can thrive. And most importantly, leading by example. Remember that moment when Coach Prime asked, What's up, boss? You believe that? You, you, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no. Do you believe that? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. I read through that bull junk you wrote. I, I read through that. I sifted through all that. Yeah. Oh, no. Come on. Do you believe? Scrum leaders should be doing something similar. We need to keep that fire of belief burning in our teams. This could mean many things, from effective communication to recognizing and celebrating the small wins. It's about providing opportunities for everyone to grow and develop their skills. As leaders in Scrum, we got the power to lift our teams to greatness through unwavering belief and motivation. Let's rewind the tape and see some things Coach Prime specifically did. I remember when he took the offer at Colorado, he began saying, I'm coming. Leading up to the first game, I recall him saying, I believe. After the first game, the clip that you just heard, he's in a press conference. The reporters are asking him questions and then he finished off by asking the question, do you believe now? Wow. If I was on Coach Prime scrum team, if I had any doubt at that particular moment in time, looking at my leader, looking at my captain of the ship, out there talking to the world, out there talking to the press, and I'm probably seeing him every day, how he's showing up, he's bringing it, he, he, he's setting the standard for everybody to follow. I'm thinking about some of the things he did in the office. You know, he put up nice motivational quotes. But just being in that environment, you see all this stuff that's around the environment. You're seeing that every day. You play how you practice. <laughs> just a constant reminder of where are we going? What's the attitude? How are we going to approach things at Colorado University? He also did the same thing at the previous university he was at. He's pulling out a play out of his playbook that he's already done. So I want to highlight that for you. <clears throat> now, how, as a scrum master, do I do the same thing? Well, before I even go on any scrum team, before I even meet them, before I even talk to them, I already have in my mind that they are going to be a great team. I just don't know how we're going to get there. But before I even take the contract, I already know they're going to be a great team because greatness is a part of me. And hopefully greatness is a part of you. Here's something I want you to think about. I want you to look around your room. Look around your space. If you're driving, please don't do this. I don't want you to get in a wreck. If you're in your office, I want you to look around in your office. If you're in a public place, I want you to look around in that public place. And I want you to look at all the things that your eyes see. 
Do you realize that everything in this world was first created in somebody's mind before we ever see it in a manifestation? <laughs> but Scott, what's your point? Everything in this world happens at least two times. If you can see it in your mind, you can bring it to the manifestation. So before I even go on a team, before I even meet the team for the very first time, I already know they're going to be great. So when I show up, I'm showing up with greatness already built into me. I just need to figure out how am I going to permeate that to the entire scrum team and then ultimately to the entire organization, just like Prime did. Lesson number two, culture transformation. Run that play. Coach Prime's journey with the Colorado University team isn't just about winning games. It's about changing a culture, a mindset, the way they thought and acted. Think of it like when a team gets a new coach and suddenly they start believing they can win every game. That's what Coach Prime did. Imagine a scrum team who gets a new scrum master. Before we got there, they was not delivering anything of value to the customers. But through your leadership, through your belief, through your culture transformation, you help them to get to that point. Now, in Agile team, we know that culture is a big deal too. Scrum masters, we're like the coaches for Scrum team and we have this superpower. We can shape the team's culture. Coach Prime got his team to think like winners and we can do something similar. We create a space where trust and collaboration can thrive. How? Well, it's all about open communication. You see that in the way he deals with his coaches, the way he deals with the public, the way he deals with his, his developers, the way he deals with his players. Everyone, just from outside looking in, you just have a sense that they have a lot of open communication there. We want to celebrate the wins, even the losses, as opportunities to get better. We also remind our teams of the Scrum and Agile values and principles. Just as Coach Prime turned this team's belief into a winning culture, we can guide our teams towards a culture of excellence where everyone is committed to achieving the same goal. Scrum Masters, product owners, do you have a goal? According to the Scrum Guide, you definitely have a product goal, which is the vision of what we're trying to create. And you also have a sprint goal that answers the question of why are we doing this sprint in the first place? But Scrum Master, do you have a team goal? What kind of great team do we want to have? Do you want to be great? If not, maybe I'm on the wrong team. <laughs> are some questions that uh, you should add to the things that are also in the Scrum Guide. It's about the people from a Scrum Master standpoint. It's not about the product. We are people-centric. Oh, by the way, did you read or listen to your Scrum Guide today? If not, make sure you do that before the end of your day. Lesson number three, continuous improvement. Run that play. Coach Prime's journey to success wasn't about luck. It was all about finding ways to get better. Like when you play a game and you keep getting better each time. In Agile, we call it continuous improvement. And it's a big, big deal. Here's how it works. Agile teams like Coach Prime's football team don't settle for good enough. We always want to do better. Scrum teams do this by regularly looking at what they're doing, figuring out what can be improved, and then doing it. We have these meetings called retrospectives where we talk about our work, find things to make better, and make a plan to do it. Just like after the game, pretty sure they take a day off. But at some point in time, they're going to look at the film of the previous game to see where they made mistakes and to learn from those mistakes so that they can best prepare for the next game. Ah, just like Coach Prime is making his team better, scrum teams with their scrum master's help focus on small changes that make a big difference. It's all about getting better one step at a time to deliver more value each sprint, fostering a culture of perpetual improvement that ultimately leads to excellence. I've mentioned before that feedback is the fastest way to mastery. We're going to 
look at what we did over the course of this sprint. If we're talking about this football game, they run one week sprints. What's the sprint goal? Sprint goal is to win the game. What is the product goal? The product goal is to win the championship. So we are scrum team have that North star. We have that ultimate goal, which is the product goal, but we also have a sprint goal. Every sprint do we deliver? Maybe, maybe not. But if we don't, we're going to learn from, okay, we got a done increment. Let's learn from what we did to do that. And if we didn't get the done, let's still learn what we need to correct or fix so we can do it. So we can get to the destination that we all desire. Very nice. Lesson number four, roster changes and adaptability. Run that play. You know what Coach Prime did when his team needed it the most? He made changes to his roster and he did it fast. Imagine if your favorite sports team got new players right before a big game. That's a bit like what Coach Prime did. That is a, a very challenging situation to pull that off. A lot of new players before a big game. Now, I hear you talking. I hear you. I'm ready to, to deal with that right now. Well, Scott, we don't have a transfer portal where we can go get the best scrum masters, where we can go get the best product owner, where we can go get the best developers. No, we don't. But we do have this principle in scrum called cross-functional. Scrum teams have all the skills on our team to deliver whatever it is we're trying to, to deliver or to do whatever it is we're trying to do. Do you have the skills on your team to get it done, to win the game? If not, the Scrum Master, you should be trying to figure out how can you get the skill sets on your team that you need. Here's a couple of examples I have for you. I remember one sprint, we did not get it done because we did not have somebody from user experience on our team. So after that sprint, after the retrospective, I went and talked to you know the UX department and said, look, I need a UX person on my team, on my scrum team, so that we can be cross-functional and have all the skills that we need to deliver. I'm not going to allow that to be the impediment, the blocker for my team not getting to done because we don't have the person on our team. A lot of environments I go to use something called DevOps. The problem I have with that is DevOps is a different department. I was on the scrum team. That happened too. Yeah, we was waiting on DevOps to do something. And because they didn't do it in time before the sprint was over, we didn't complete everything that we wanted to complete. So guess what? I went and made a case that, look, I need a member from DevOps on my team. Uh, no. Nah. Why? Because scrum is founded upon lean methodology, meaning that we want to eliminate the waste, the waste of steps, the waste of me talking to that person, going back and forth with this person. Why don't we have that person on our team so that will help us get to where it is we're trying to get to more efficiently? That will even be a situation where we can have better communication because that person is there with us real time, every day, all day to see what's going on and to help us navigate through whatever problems and situation that may come up. And the whole team can swarm on that problem so that we can get the customer some value because that's what we're trying to do in Scrum. Now, in Agile, we know that things can change. Requirements, the market, everything. And just like Coach Prime, Agile teams are adaptable. We change our approach to make sure we're giving our customers the best value. Scrum masters and product owners, we're the ones who help our teams make these changes. In Agile, we have a rule, be adaptable. It's like a football team changing their strategy to beat the other team. We need to be ready for anything. So we, like Coach Prime, make sure our teams can change and still be successful no matter what comes our way. Question. If we're using the Scrum Guide's terminology for the accountabilities, would Coach Prime be the product owner? Or would Coach Prime be the Scrum Master? What are your thoughts? I want you to defend your answer by telling us why. Please leave your comments below and I will give my thoughts in the next episode. I look forward to your comments.
Thank you for joining us today at Scrum Academy. We hope you found the insights from Coach Prime's playbook as inspiring as we did. Remember, Agile and Scrum principles can be found in the most unexpected places. In fact, I see Scrum everywhere. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, share, and stay tuned for more stories and strategies to elevate your Scrum game. Until the next time, keep unleashing the power of Agile and Scrum. And as Coach Prime would say, do you believe now? Be Agile, do Scrum, and be legendary, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you read or listen to your Scrum Guide today. If not, go check that video out right now.